My name is Ayana Njuma, and I have a story to tell you. When I was seven years old, I was a part of the civil rights movement. How kids change the world. Part one, unfair times. When I was seven years old, I went on a trip to New York City with 19 other kids. This was a long time ago, in 1958. I lived in Oklahoma City, Oklahoma. As we traveled north, we noticed something. White people and African Americans could use the same water fountains. They could eat in the same restaurants. They could even sleep next door to each other in hotels. That may not sound strange to you, but to us, it was very strange. We were African-American kids from the South. At that time, the Southern part of our country was segregated. That means that African-Americans and white people were kept apart. In Oklahoma City, where I lived, there were signs on water fountains that said, whites only, or for colored people. African-American kids and white kids couldn't go to school together and we couldn't eat in the same restaurants. My friends and I were amazed at how different New York City was from the South. Up there, it wasn't segregated. When we got back home to Oklahoma, we said, why do we have to live this way? We decided to make a change right then. We didn't want to wait, and being kids didn't stop us. I was little but my voice was just as important as everyone else's voice. Part two, training for a sit-in. We decided to sit in at a local lunch counter that was for whites only. At a sit-in, you sit at a restaurant and you ask to be served. You do not leave until you are served. It's a peaceful way to change something that is unfair. But before we could sit in, our parents wanted to make sure we were safe. The adults didn't want us to get hurt. So we went into training. It was almost like the military. You wouldn't send soldiers into a war zone without preparation. Same thing with us. In training, we learned the principles of nonviolence. We learned about Dr. Martin Luther King Jr and Mahatma Gandhi, who believed in peace. We learned that people are scared of change. Many people wouldn't want African Americans to eat in a whites-only restaurant. And because they are scared of change, they would say nasty things and be unkind. We learned that we had to stay calm and be peaceful, no matter how terribly they behaved. In training, the adults yelled at us. They threw water on us. We practiced being calm and not yelling back. So when we started the sit-ins, we were prepared. Part three, the sit-ins begin. The first sit-in we did was at Cat's lunch counter. It was me and about 12 other kids. We all wore our best clothes. We went into this segregated whites-only restaurant and sat down. We were very polite. I asked for a hamburger and a Coke. The waitress said no. She was very, very rude. People were furious. They didn't like that African-American kids were trying to change the restaurant and integrate it. They yelled at us. They poured ketchup on us. And they even poured coffee on us. I was thinking, these people are crazy, but I wasn't scared. I knew we were doing the right thing. We used our training. We didn't yell. We didn't fight. We used good manners. We sat quietly at the counter and chatted with each other. We brought magazines and coloring books. We were not going to leave until we were served. At the end of the day, the restaurant closed and we left. And even though we'd been there all day, 
I wasn't even tired. The next day we went back. We ordered sodas again, but no one gave us any food. But we were not going to give up. We were determined. We went back a third day. And on the third day, when we ordered our food, the waitress brought it to us. She wasn't nice about it, but she did it anyway. From that day forward, Kat's lunch counter was no longer segregated. It was integrated. Anyone could eat there. We were so happy. Can you believe a bunch of kids just like you had so much power? Part four, the kids keep working to make a change. But our work wasn't done. So many restaurants in Oklahoma City were segregated. Cat's lunch counter was only the beginning. Over the next six years, we did sit-ins at dozens of restaurants. More and more kids joined each time. And people showed up to support us. They held signs outside the restaurant. The restaurant owners got pretty clever about trying to keep us away. At John A. Brown's department store, they took away all the chairs in the restaurant so there'd be no place to sit. That's my little sister, Lana, when she was five. She didn't have a chair to sit on, so she just leaned on the table. Taking away a few chairs wasn't gonna stop us. In most places, they wouldn't let us use the bathroom. That wasn't gonna stop us either. In one place, a man tried to stick a monkey on me. That was really scary, but it didn't stop us. One by one, we integrated the restaurants in our town. We started our sit-in, and a week or so later, anyone could eat there. Slowly but surely, our sit-ins had changed the city. We'd done it. A group of kids had changed our town. We had made our voices heard. Across the country, other people were fighting for integration, too. People went on marches. They held signs. They made speeches. They wrote articles. They made their voices heard. Finally, 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 in 1964, when I was 14, the President of the United States, Lyndon B. Johnson, signed the Civil Rights Act. That was a law that said segregation was illegal all over the country. People could drink from the same water fountains, attend any public school, and eat in any restaurant. Our small group of kids helped change the nation. Everyone has a voice. You have a voice too. How will you use it? <laughs>